Hope everybody's having a really good day and welcome to Voices of the New Era. This is, in my personal opinion, the most exciting time in the history of the church. And, and on this, this broadcast, what we want to do is just interview and talk to different people who are moving forward in the new era, who are movers and shakers. And I am super excited to have my great friend, Apostle LeJohn Co today. So I'm just going to let you talk about what you and your wife are doing and the different ministries, because you guys are pressing forward with everything that God has for you. Well, you know, hey, first of all, I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you to uh, you and to, of course, your amazing wife. You guys are tremendous as friends, uh, as covenant uh, family. And so I really, really thank you for having me with you today. I really believe, as you said, we are, we've been, we just came off for three weeks. My wife did um, about a five day fearless challenge. And then I did 10 days uh, where we did what we call the sent one masterclass. And so uh, that was tremendous. You were one of those speakers and uh, you shared just tremendous revelation uh, on being a sent one, not just, not just simply the, the gift of the apostle, but also uh, the, the apostolic church, our assignment, our purpose, our destiny, the mantles, the missions, and the things that we're called to do. So I, I am really, really excited about that. I really believe that where some people have felt that COVID-19 has been a, uh, a potential hurdle or an obstacle, and of course, we don't in any way take lightly the people who suffered challenges and suffered the loss of family members and su suffered the loss of other things. But I also believe that it's a, it's a real strong transitional point. I believe it's a shift. I believe that there is a, uh, a powerful shift and exchange that's happening in this process. And I think it's a significant one that if we don't pay very close attention to it, we're going to miss some things and we're going to be, in a sense, left behind in some of the things that God wants to do. But that's, that's some of the stuff that we're doing right now. She's uh, you know, getting ready for her Fearless Conference. She has Fearless 2020, the rise of the Shiro. And uh, I, I thought that was pretty cool. The whole uh, Marvel comic um, marketing strategy and uh, process that they've used for that and her team is used. So uh, they are doing a tremendous job with that. Other than that, I'm doing our Discipleship Training Institute. We're starting off uh, really talking about discipleship. That, you know, that's one of my core passions is to see people really disciple and not just see people sit in churches for 20 or 30 years but to see people really, really disciple to fulfill the assignment and the destiny that's on their life. That's so good. And I just want to tell everybody that uh, Apostle Co has an amazing podcast on the Charisma Podcast Network and him and his wife, they're just a, a powerhouse couple. And my wife and I, we were actually with them in Little Rock, Arkansas at a conference. And we noticed that there was a kindred spirit and we were really connected and um, Apostle, what I want you to really speak into, and one of the things that you do as good as anybody is you bring people together. You are a networker, and your online presence is very strong. Now, I hear a lot of people talk about the power of ministries that have a local body. They are doing what I call local ministry but they also have regional ministry and then they have national influence. And that's one thing that you and your wife have really tapped into that you have local body, local believers, what we would call a local church expression. But then on a, on a national aspect, you guys do so many different classes, so many different podcasts and networkings of bringing so many people together. So could you speak into that? Because I know that we need local church, but also we need voices from all over America. And like I said, you guys are as good as any in doing that. Well, you know, I, I believe that uh, I was talking to one of our spiritual sons and he was sharing with me one day and I, sometimes we get a, a narrow focus. And I think that when we get a narrow focus and I think the days of old, uh, there was that primary, either your, you know, even when it came to being either in ministry, bivocational, and so you were either or. Uh, and I think we're getting to a place now where we're both and. So we're both and, we're both local, and we're also global. We're both, um, you know, you're having a local church community, but also having a global church community. One of the things that was prophesied over us when we were ordained, of course, you know, we're connected to uh, Apostle John Eckhart as a spiritual father. 
And uh, when he ordained us, I always go back to that ordination. And one of the prophetic words he said was that our, not only would our voice go, but our feet would touch uh, the, the sands of many nations. And so when I thought about that, I thought about the significance of what we're doing now and how we are traveling. I think by now we've been to 26 countries. We've been to about 80 different cities in the United States. And so it's given us that, that larger reach but we also have a strong uh, community in the local Tampa Bay area. And as you said, I think that the, the challenge is, is that sometimes people have told us you can only do one. And that's what we love about you and your wife, Autumn. You guys are also not just doing it in the low community, you're doing it globally. And then not only are you doing it in the church, but you're also doing it in the marketplace. And so I, my personal opinion is, is that God is birthing a, a breed of people who have the ability to be able to operate in the local church and build local church strong, but simultaneously build in the marketplace and build from a global perspective. And uh, I think that that's, that's kind of this new thing. I went, let me tell you a story real quick. I think this, is, this will bring it home. You know, I love telling stories. So uh, recently, now, we're, that's another thing. We have so many things in common. And uh, it's like you, you are my brother from another mother. So uh, yeah. I was laughing. But I went into a bike store the other day. And when I went into this bike store, I had always known, OK, there are mountain bikes and then there are street bikes. And so when I went in, I was talking to the lady at the counter and she said, it sounds like, though, that you don't want just a, a mountain bike or just a street bike. You want a hybrid. And so the hybrid bike has tires and it has the ability to be able to be off road and on the road. And it gives you the ability to be able to do do both. It's built different. And I think in this season, God is building new voices and they're built different and they have the capacity to be able to do both and and not either or. That is so good. I had a, a prophetic word from the Lord today to share with people. And one thing God was telling me is people are looking for a natural blueprint on what they're going to do. They're not going to be able to find it in this season. They're going to have to get a blueprint from heaven that their ministry, they can't look at somebody else's ministry and they can't mimic it. They can't copy it. They can get good insight, but they're going to have to tap in to what the Lord is saying. And somebody asked me like recently, like, how long have you been doing what you're doing? And I said, well, it's funny. I've been a health coach less than a year. We've had a church for two years and a network for three years. So basically I didn't start doing anything that I'm doing now till I was 42 and yes, I had some training and, and college degrees, but 90% of what I'm doing has shifted in the last three years. We're forerunners. And if people like comfort zones, they're not going to make it in this new era. You're going to have to live. I don't, what is a comfort zone? I really don't even know. But we're going to live so far out of our comfort zone. People are going to be stretched at such a level. But here is the thing. I believe when you are stretched and moving forward, you are going to live in rest and peace. And another word God gave me was people are going to do more than they ever thought they could do, but they're going to find more peace and more rest into that. And I believe that people are about to step into every prophetic word that God has spoken to them. So why don't you speak into that right there about people stepping into their now destiny? Well, you, you know, I, I think what you're saying is so significant and I think that it goes back to another principle that we've espoused uh, within the, the family of ministry that we operate in, which is team ministry. And so I was I was just saying last night that there is something that God uh, people will say, you know, if it's God, everything will line up. Sometimes when it's God, it, it listen, you don't have enough money. You don't have enough time. You don't have enough knowledge. You don't have enough wisdom. And he will literally stretch you outside of your capacity and your ability. If you remember going back to Moses, Moses said, I'm a stutterer. I'm not eloquent of speech. I cannot do what you need me to do. You look at Esther. She was a girl who was basically exiled you know, from her land. And here she is uh, in the harem. And so now she's got to step up and she's okay. If I perish, let me perish. I know it's not, it's not common. And so God, God is calling people to step outside of their comfort zones into the place of destiny, as you said. 
I was talking to one of the, the, the leaders on our team and I said, listen, there are some things that God is requiring us to do in this season. And I am in a place where I'm like, listen, I need, uh, I need the team. I need their wisdom. I need God send those other people and, and give me the wisdom to be able to hear the people that you've sent. Because in this season, if you're uncomfortable, it's because God has given you a, a vision that's bigger than you. If it's, if it's comfortable and if it's easy, I, I sometimes doubt whether or not it's God. I believe that when it's God, it is so big that it makes you afraid. It causes you to be frightened and it can literally scare you half to death. And you're like, God, can this really be the assignment that you have for me? And my answer would be yes. That's it. My wife and I, we talk about that very same thing all the time about every week our faith level has to go up. Our faith level has to rise. And every time, listen, I'm going to tell you, God has never failed me. He's never led me astray, but he's never led me down the easy path. And the people that aren't risk takers, the ones that aren't ready to step out. And I know and believe in this new era, what we call revival and awakening is going to be the normal. We're going to move in signs, wonders, miracles. You're going to see entrepreneurs launching businesses that thrive right off the bat. You're going to see prodigal sons and daughters come in. Things that we have been praying for that we would call miraculous are actually going to become normal. It's going to be a biblical church. And, and I really believe that this day and hour, God is about to really anoint and give creative wisdom and ideas to entrepreneurs. God is going to have some kingdom entrepreneurs rise up in this hour. I know you got something good to say about that. You know, it's something, it's interesting. Let me, let me tell you the, the significance of timing and God. Uh, uh, 2000, I think this was 2012. Uh, I did a series and this, this is, this just blows me away. I believe, as you said, apostles and prophets and, and, and just the church of God in general. I don't want to, I don't want to just, just, you know, just limit it to apostolic prophetic people, but I do believe that we're forerunners. I believe that God will give us a vision for something that's going to happen ahead. And it hasn't, we haven't even gotten there yet. And then we will, we will go towards it. What you said, uh, there is a, we have a book and this is interesting. We've not been able to release that book from 2000, probably 12, 14, somewhere in there. I think it was 2014. And, uh, and we wrote this book and it's called The New Normal, God's Original Intent. And so I think that's what we're getting ready to go into. We're getting ready to, and, uh, to, to suddenly go into God's, to a new normal, which was God's original intent because somewhere we had gotten off and there, was a, there were limits that were put on. There were glass ceilings that were put up. And God's literally getting ready to burst every glass ceiling. He's getting ready to take all the, all the limits off, all the governors off, everything that was holding back the people of God and their assignments and their purpose. He's getting ready to break fear off of you. He's getting ready to cause you to literally launch into a place of destiny that's going to blow your mind. It's going to blow the minds of everybody around you because from the day that you were born, before God even formed you in your womb, there was an anointing on your life. Listen, Apostle Jojo, I'm talking to somebody out there who, who, is, who is saying, but, but that sounds good for you guys because you guys have been doing ministry, but what about me? I'm telling you, God's going to take people who have no name, who are on the backside of the mountain, who nobody's ever heard of, who've been hiding from their calling, and he's going to launch them forth, and they're going to lead large groups of people out of bondage. They're going to lead large groups of people, come on, out of desert places, come on, out of, out of places where people say it, this is where you're confined to. You'll never break out of this. And God's going to do that. And it's been, even as you said, entrepreneurs, I believe that it's the season for the entrepreneur. It's the season for you that have creative ideas. And God's been showing you stuff. And some stuff that God's been showing you has, again, been ahead of time because he'll give you an idea. He'll give you a creative solution to something that the earth needs, and it's going to be ahead of time. So sometimes, you you know, you almost gave up. You threw in the towel because your idea, it seemed too big. You didn't have enough money. It seemed preposterous. But God has the ability to give you visions for things that are ahead of time, and they're going to meet solutions in the earth. And guess what? You 
keep launching that thing, that entrepreneur idea, the entrepreneur endeavor. Me and Apostle Jojo, we've talked about that a lot of times. When you pioneer stuff, people laugh at you. Listen, they, they, they laughed at Noah. Nobody had ever built a, a boat that big. It had never rained on it. There was no need for it. And people will say, oh, it doesn't take all that. Do you really need to do that? But the reality is just keep building what you're building. Keep creating what you're creating because as sure as, to, as, as today is the way it is and we're looking at Apple computers and, and all kinds of computers back in my day, we'd have been like, oh, there's no need for all that. You don't need a computer that's that powerful. You don't need the computer to be able to stream to anything. What is streaming? What's Facebook? Now, we don't, listen, we don't operate without these things and the thing that God has called you to create as an entrepreneur, it's going to solve a problem in the earth and it's going to bless you financially. Amen. I tell you what we need to talk about right now. We need to talk about true mothers and fathers. I remember mm -hmm. what changed my life four years ago. I got around a gentleman by the name of Apostle Ken Malone. He lives in Satellite Beach, Florida. He, he's my apostle. I remember one day I called him on the phone. He agreed to, to speak into my life and be my, my spiritual mentor. And I was asking him questions and he stopped and said, can I ask you a question? I said, yes, sir. He said, why do you keep calling me, asking me for my permission? I got one word for you, go. Mm. And I said, what? He said, go. He said, go, go, go. He said, go three times in a row, change my life. My whole life in ministry, I heard no, no, no. What you just said was people have these ideas and have been, they've hit a roadblock, they've hit a ceiling, something's happened. I'm telling you, I'm agreeing with that word. You are about to do what God has called you to do. I don't care how many times it's failed. I don't care how many people have told you no. You are about to align with the right people. And there's there's YouTube videos, there's podcasts that I listen to that when I listen to people talk, I call it, it makes my baby leap. It makes my dreams leap. You're going to find some people in this season that their voice is going to challenge you and thrust you in to the things that God has. And when you're aligned with the right spiritual father, listen, the right spiritual fathers and the right spiritual mothers you know, they're not going to use you for any self gain. What they're going to do is I believe in this hour, God is bringing up real mothers and father. Like you said, Apostle Eckhart, uh, my apostle, Apostle Ken Malone, people like that, that is going to champion people to push people forward. And I believe we're going to see discipleship, real discipleship, real discipleship is if you did good, I tell you, you did good. If, if, if you need a spanking, you're going to get a spanking. You know, people that, that love you enough to tell you the truth. And, and we're going to see just people that, like you said, that a lot of people have passed over. They're going to be the ones that God is going to champion in, in this hour, in this day, in this time, in this season. And I want to just echo what Apostle Coe said, that, that some, some people may feel rejected. You, you may feel oppressed. This is your season that God is about to raise you up and he is going to put you around the right people that can speak into your life and push you forward. So why don't you just speak into just true mothers and fathers and even you and your wife, y'all have such a great heart to champion people. And, you know, it's so refreshing when people actually can hear the heart of, of a true father, um, so I know you got a lot of good stuff on that. You've probably written a book or two on it. If not, you're going to write one. You know, I, I think it's significant. I think that, um, that there are a lot of people who are wandering. Um, and, you know, it, it, the thing about the fathering dimension is you really got to, you know, we really have to be honest. There are a lot of people who are, who are wondering and wandering uh, about their identity, um, about direction, about focus, about clarity. And I think that fathers bring those things. They bring identity. They bring clarity. They bring direction. As you said, they bring redirection. We call it correction. But sometimes you need redirection. Um, I was listening to, um, if I said his name, most of you would know him. But he's a, he's a general in the faith. And I was talking to him one day. And he was sharing with me about one of his spiritual daughters who was really taking over uh, their continent. I mean, she is just literally taking over that continent uh, for the kingdom. And he said this, he said, as a father, 
I, if if I'm if that if this young lady is not careful, she will run and but she will run out of energy and she'll run out of her lane. And he said, and my job is to almost do the same thing that a great uh, a great coach does with a. Uh, basically with a racehorse that you keep them in the lane you keep them blinded to stuff that's going to be a distraction to them keep them running in the right lane keep them headed in the right direction so they can focus on on what they've been assigned to do because sometimes if we don't have that somebody that, that can see what we can't see that can see the strength in us to see our gifting see our calling see our anointing see what our purpose is i had a testimony last night uh, by one of our spiritual daughters and uh, she was sharing with our with our church and our online community, and of course, our local community. She was sharing how one word from my wife of clarity caused her to align, get into the a place of destiny, not to say that the other stuff she wasn't good because she could be good at anything that she that she puts her mind to. She's just that smart. But when she focused on the thing that that she was that she was great at, all of a sudden it opened doors. And now just one of the contracts that she got in her in her business caused her to literally catapult that it was almost half of her income last year. And so I think that's what spiritual mothers and fathers and and that fathering and mothering dimension does. It, it directs you. It helps you to focus. It helps you to get clarity. It holds you accountable, but it also gives you support in the tough times, because no matter who you are, you're going to have some tough times. They're going to be some challenging times, but you'll have those people who can see things from a spiritual perspective, not just in the natural, but also a spiritual perspective to help guide you, to help launch you, to help propel you. As you said, the same thing happened with me that happened with you when you were talking to Apostle Ken Malone. I was talking to, uh, when I met Apostle Eckhart, I had, people had told me that I was an apostle and my wife was, you know, prophetic, but I didn't really know what that was. And I started to read his books. And as you said, my baby started to leap. And I said, man, I got to find this man. I got to find the direction. I got to find who he is. I got to meet him. And so when we met him, I began to really glean and I began to understand and I began to get more clarity. Uh, there were areas where I said, okay, I I wondered why I wasn't like other pastors that I knew. And, and I just, my, my whole perspective and my whole, uh, I, my, my vision, everything changed when I, and I knew then that I, I was, you know, that I wasn't crazy. Okay. I, I'm not crazy. I'm not weird. I'm not strange. No, it's just how I'm made. It's my DNA. It's my makeup. I, I, I love pastoring a local church, but I also love overseeing other works. I love pastoring a, a local church, but I want to create the kind of income that my, that my income is not predicated upon my local church. Uh, I wanted to, I wanted to be able to travel to the nations because I felt like there was a call for the nations. And so that, that fathering dimension released that in my life. And so I, I just feel like that's that's something that everybody, you, you got to get connected to the right people so that you can have the clarity that you need, the direction that you need. You can, you, you know, you can have the support that you need. You can have even the redirection you need when you need it. Amen. And I want you to speak into this one prophetic word God's been given to me, but the Lord has been giving me the word build. And as, as I pray, the Lord just keeps speaking to me about during this time, you know, a lot of people are in kind of a quarantine, but they're coming out. But the Lord over the last three, four weeks has been saying build, build. First of all, build yourself up. But the Lord has been speaking to me about old prophetic words that have been in me personally, about me for years to build them up. Because when we come out of this season, this is what this whole new era is about. When we come out of this season, the church is going to be different. The world's going to be different and ministry is going to be different. All the businesses we have are going to be di different. And even over the last month or two, some of our businesses have absolutely exploded in a good way. Ministries, things are happening. Even before this season's fully arrived, I already sensed the word of the Lord being so true and proven about building. And I still believe there's some people that are watching this and, 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 and listening to this, and, and the Lord is echoing that word he gave me a few weeks ago, this is a season for you to put both hands to the prophetic word and build what I put inside of you. And another word I heard was the Lord said, I'm going to give you favor, blessing, and grace to build like you've never built before in your life. So if anybody is, is listening to this and saying, I'm just not ready to build, I'm telling you, you better get ready or you're going to miss your chance. So why don't you speak into that build word? Because you and your wife are building right now. I don't even know if y'all sleep any. Y'all just building, building, building. 
Well, you know, I, I think that it, um, let me give you, uh, again, I, I love stories. 2014, you remember Periscope hadn't really come out. It was out, but it wasn't as, as, as prevalent as we know it now. Uh, Facebook was out, but again, it wasn't as strong. And there was something that hit 2014, somewhere in there. And God gave me this, this word of revelation. Uh, he says, I want you to come on every day at noon for about five minutes. And so I came and I told my, I had a staff meeting. I sat down with my staff. I told the staff, I said, hey, listen, God, God, God guys, God gave me this revelation every day. I'm going to come on at 12 o'clock noon, uh, Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to do five minutes. I'll hop off. And so one of the people that was at the table said, no, nope, I'm an introvert. And uh, I really wouldn't want to, I would unfriend you if you started going on every day, you know, every day and you're on my timeline every day. And so I listened to that, Apostle Jojo. I'm telling somebody that's out there listening today, do not listen to people who tell you not to build in this season. Because what happened was I listened to that and I'm probably about two years and probably 50,000, 75,000 people behind what I could have been had I built when God said build and obeyed what God said do. So I'm talking to somebody out there who, who you, you, you're around people. Listen to me. I, I don't, uh, listen, I can see that one person person who is sitting on your couch right now and you said listen you're talking to me you're you're that person who you're around people who are telling you not to build uh that's not going to work it's not going to it's not going to happen i'm telling you the stuff that god has told you to do is before it's time and so god is giving you revelation and wisdom that's going to that if you build it now somebody's going to come and live in it it's it's like it's like you know building it's like real estate we don't you, you know we build and sometimes we can pass by a place and say, why are they building those houses there? It's because the realtors and the, and the investors know that one, if they build it, people will come, number one, but they also know some demographics about the way cities are moving that sometimes, listen to me good, sometimes we don't know. And the same thing happens with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit knows where you need to be building. So if he tells you to build something specifically, he already knows that there is a there is going to be a, a leaning in that direction, that people are going to move in that direction. And because you've already got it built, listen, it's going to work well. Me and uh, Apostle Jojo were talking about this. The Lord told us last year about September to begin to build this studio. So we built a studio. And so when we built the studio, we didn't know that COVID-19 was going to hit in February, but God knew it. And so when COVID-19 hit, we were already good. We already had a social media following. We already had a studio. So the only thing we had to do was, was turn the lights on, turn on the camera, push the live button, and there we are. We've got great sound. We've got great lighting. We've got everything we need. And so I'm telling you, don't don't wait until it's needed to build it. You got to, if you wait that to then, it's going to be too late. You got to build the thing that God is telling you to build now. And I promise you when the, when the time comes, the earth is going to need it. And you're going to already have a solution for it before the need is already a uh, given. That's it. Dig your well before you get thirsty. So that's good, man. I, I love that. You, you got me fired up on that. And you know, it is. And one thing that was so powerful, a nugget that I gleaned from that was, you know, when we respond and say yes to God, that is somebody else's solution. Mm. When we say yes and we build something, it is for somebody else. And the main entrepreneurs that are succeeding in the world today are the ones that are solving problems. And all you have to do is tap into the kingdom of God. The, the word says, Matthew 6, 10, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You get that right blueprint. You know, when God gives you a prophetic word, it is basically like a seed put inside of you. And that word will sit there and it will start to grow. But, you know, you can't produce fruit unless you br break the surface. And, and when, when stuff starts to grow, people are going to notice you've got so many seeds inside of you so many powerful, powerful prophetic words. And, you know, God believed in you enough to put them inside of you. You just got to believe in yourself to do them. So I want to encourage you with that. But this is uh, probably the last question I got for, for this broadcast today. But where do you see, let's say, the church now? And where do you see it going, let's say, the next two, three, five years? I'm talking about a lot like just not church buildings, but what I call the, the church that is moving, the church that is building, that is really tapped into the Lord. 
You know, I, I feel, and, and I know that I could potentially be wrong, but I'm still stuck on the hybrid, the hybrid movement of the church where uh, a portion of your people are going to be actually in the brick and mortar. But I think many of the churches are going to be so much larger than that because they'll have large digital communities. And I, my perspective is that the, the social media of our day is the same as television uh, of the days of old, that, that now if you don't, it's like in the, in the old days, if you didn't have a television ministry, you really didn't, where were things that you couldn't really reach and you couldn't expand. I think now many of our millennials are not watching television. Most, you know, many of our millennials are actually on social media. And so if we can tap into that, I really believe we're going to, we're going to really win many souls unto the Lord, number one. But I also believe that, that, that we're, that, that there is another level of hunger that's going to come out of people from the COVID experience that people are going to realize that because I was, I was standing again at a, at a, at the bike shop today and I was standing in the line, I was talking to the guy and the guy said, the guy behind me says, you know, we were had to wait outside of the thing still, even though Florida is opening back up, they still wanted us to wait outside. And so there's three of us waiting outside. There's about four people in the store. And um, this, the guy says, our, our nation has shifted and it's changed. And we've never seen this before. I'm almost, well, I'm, I'm close to 50 and I've never, this has never happened in my lifetime. Neither has it happened in the lifetime of other people that are, that are, that are even older than me. And so when I see this apostle, my thought is, is that if, if we don't, if we don't move with the shift, one, we're going to be left behind. But I think also we're getting ready to experience things in ways that we've not experienced. And, and the way we do church and the way we operate is going to be totally different than what we've, than what we've operated. I even believe there's a leveling of the playing field in some aspects. I really believe that there is a, there is a leveling of the playing field, and I believe there is some shifting of some things. Let me say this. I believe even as it has pertained to uh, you look at all of your big block stores. So you look at Sears, you look at JCPenney's, you look at some of those stores who've not made the transition to some of their online stuff. Many of them have had to close. And so I think that because of the way this shift is happening, I think it's paramount for the church to really tap into. And then let me say this, not just do it to be doing it, but do it with excellence. If you're going to be on social media, do it with excellence. Make sure you've got great equipment. Make sure you've got um, and, and make sure that you're genuine. Make sure that what you're doing, you're doing it with excellence, because I believe this. I believe that there are people who are going to who are who are I've got people, Apostle, who are moving to my city to be a part of our local community. And I've had numbers of people that moved to our city to be a part of our local community based on the fact that they saw us on us from a social media perspective. So I think that it, in my opinion, I think it's very, very significant and very imperative uh, for us to not just look at this as just something that's happening during COVID, but to look at ways to be able to create community again outside of just the local context, but also to be able to build community in the larger global context. Because in the past, we've always said. Well, if you're in another city, find a church in the local, in, in, you know, in the local community. Nowadays, that may not be the case because there may be teachings and graces and anointings that you carry that that person who lives in that community, they may not have a church like that in, that, in their community. So it may be necessary for you to, to develop a system to be able to, to minister to, to stay in contact with those people who are, who are, who are touching your mini or whose mini who's, who people that your ministry is touching outside of your local community. Man, that, that is so good and so spot on. Um, I am going to ask one more question. Um, yes, sir. Man, when you were talking about mega suddenly about a year ago, that resonated in my spirit so much. I'm sure most everybody, you know, listening, they've heard about mega suddenly. But for, for the 10% that hasn't, can you do is, is give them a quick download about mega suddenly? You know, that word, we were in a meeting in Houston with Apostle John. He was doing a meeting called Reset. And so when we were sitting in that meeting, uh, all of a sudden he was preaching. He said, the Lord said, I'm getting ready to reset you. When he said, the Lord said he's getting ready to reset, the, the word that the Lord gave me was, I'm not just going to reset you. I'm going to do it suddenly. And so that word literally took us one word, suddenly took us around the world. It was funny, Apostle. We were we turned on Facebook Live. We got on one day. And, and so I was going to do suddenly. I said, you know, God's getting ready to do it for you. Suddenly I talked about the woman uh, with the issue of blood. And, you know, the word suddenly is used about 46 times 
times uh, in the Bible, in the New Testament. And then uh, there's two other synonyms for it, which are immediately and straightway. One's used 46 times, the other one's used 44 times. And so these words are used synonymous to mean something that happens abruptly, that it happens uh, out of the blue, it happens without notice, uh, it's going to happen. And it's literally, it literally overflow, impact, increase that happens in your life. And I, that, that word has really, really impacted. Listen, it took us to Australia. It took us to the Philippines. It took us to uh, Peru. It took us to Trinidad. It, it's taken us literally around the world. We've gone to uh, even other countries more than that. We've done Atlanta. So we've done a lot of cities where we, and we did one in Little Rock. Yourself and your wife came and ministered with us. That was tremendous there in Little Rock, Arkansas. And I tell you, it was tremendous. And I've seen, let me tell you something I've seen out of those. We've seen breakthroughs out of it. Uh, we've seen people b- break through an increase. Apostle Jojo, let me do some. I, I hadn't planned on doing this, but I pray that you'll, you'll let me do it. But in this book, there are some declarations, and these declarations uh, have really, really uh, blessed me. Page 40, 82 out of the book, Sudden Break. Can I read a few of those declarations, Apostle? Do it. I love them. Uh, It says, let vindication and justice be my portion suddenly. Let everything that's been held up in my life suddenly be released. Let every stagnant place in my life suddenly accelerate. Let every barren place suddenly flourish. Let every closed wound suddenly open. Let every place where my soul is troubled, I will suddenly experience the peace of God that passes all understanding. Let every underdog suddenly be promoted. Let sickness and infirmity suddenly be healed in every area of my life. Let marriages suddenly be restored. Let every scale upon my eyes be removed and suddenly let clarity of vision come forth. Let sinners be suddenly saved. Let broken relationships be reconciled suddenly. Let dry bones suddenly live in Jesus' name. Let every desert in my life be turned into an oasis suddenly. Let me give you the last one. Let me give you more. two more and I'm done. Let every naysayer and mocker be suddenly confounded by my success. Let my enemies suddenly be scattered. And this, this, this is my final one. Let my finances go from a trickle to a sudden oasis overflow. Let there not be enough room to receive the blessings God is releasing in my life. I had to say that last one because I know there's somebody out there that needs a sudden deluge of resources because you need resources to build. If you don't have resources, you're not going to be able to build. So I'm believing God for sudden breakthrough in your life so that you can have what you need in every area of your life so you can build like you've never been built before. That is great. Now, where can people find that book at? They can get it, you know, you can get it at uh, Barnes and Nobles, you can get it at uh, Amazon, but you can also get it at our website. And that's uh, real simple, www.lajonandvalora.com. Again, that's Lajon, L-A-J-U-N-A-N-D-V-A-L-O-R-A.com. And um, you can get it. We've got uh, we've got, you know, a couple of cases of them here in stock in the uh, in our office. And so we can get them sent out to you uh, ASAP. So, yes, sir. Well, that's good. I, I appreciate you, my covenant friend, being on here with me today. And I want to thank everybody who, who tuned in and uh, just want to just speak a blessing over everybody. I, I just bless everybody who, who's listening today. And, and I just declare favor, blessing, and grace upon everything that you do and sudden breakthrough to be your portion. Love y'all and see you next time.